Hello to all. I am Vishnu. Today I'll be talking about important differences between cholinergic and anticholinergic nervous system and in that process I'll tell you how you can remember it easily. Now you know very well that cholinergic and anticholinergic nervous systems come under autonomic nervous system which is a huge heading. Autonomic nervous system is classified into four cholinergic, anticholinergic, uh, adrenergic and anti-adrenergic or we say sympathomimetic and sympatholytic. So today I'll be talking about cholinergic and anticholinergic. Means in very simple terms I'll tell you how you can remember it easily. See if you, uh, there are a lot of people who are confused, you know so many medicines are there, they act on different receptors and so many things are there. So I'm not going into too much of details because uh, it will be a lit literally long lecture. Anyways, you can join my group uh, in our WhatsApp groups. Um, in two or three weeks, I'll be starting free workshops on the same. But for a precise information for now, let me tell you some important differences and how you can remember it easily. See, cholinergic nervous system is related to acetylcholine. So, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which increases the secretions of your body. Always remember this. Acetylcholine increases the secretions of your body. So, it can be the secretion of your eye which is called tears. It can be the secretions of your nose that can be sneezing. It can be secretions of your salivary gland. So, it can be saliva. It can be the secretions of your sweat gland. So, you can sweat a lot. Hyperhidrosis. It can be, you know... Diarrhea, because uh, it will increase the gastric motility. Uh, it will also, you know, increase urination. So, you can have uncontrolled urination. So, all this kind of thing. So, let's talk in summary. So, acetylcholine increases the secretions of your body. So, let's come to the eye. So, in the eyes, what happens? Acetylcholine increases lacrimation. So, it will increase the production of tears. So, what does anticholinergic do? It will block the tear glands. So, it will make your eyes more dry. That is also one reason why anticholinergics can cause blurred vision. Because they make your eyes dry. In your eyes, acetylcholine causes meiosis. Meiosis means constriction of the pupil. But anticholinergic causes dilation of the pupil. So, that is why when, uh, you know, cholinergics usually cause near vision because it causes constriction of the pupils. But widening of the pupil usually increases far vision. But in general sense, anticholinergics can cause blurred vision. The reason of blurred vision is not just the dilation of the pupil, but they also block the tear glands. So, that can cause dry eyes leading to blurred vision. It can cause itching in the eyes and all these kind of things. Now let's come to the nose. So acetylcholine usually increases sneezing because acetylcholine and histamine are very good friends. Please remember acetylcholine and histamine are very good friends. So acetylcholine can increase allergy, sneezing and all these things. Histamine also does the same. So anticholinergics are directly not used in, you know, sneezing and all these things. But if any antihistaminic which has anticholinergic property can show like that. Like for example, we have lot of antihistaminics around. They have anticholinergic property also. So that is why they make you sedated and they reduce your allergy as well. Acetylcholine makes you alert because acetylcholine increases the secretions of your body. So that makes you alert because you have sneezing, you have lacrimation, you have salivation and all these things. Anticholinergics makes you sedated. So, that is one thing we need to keep in mind. Now, let's come to the mouth. So, in the salivary glands, acetylcholine will increase the production of saliva. So, if it is uncontrolled production of saliva, it is called drooling. So, you will have, uh, you know, salivary production continuously. So, this is seen in Parkinson's disease patients also. Because in Parkinson's disease, there is reduction in dopamine and dopamine and acetylcholine are enemies. So, acetylcholine will increase. That usually causes drooling. Anticholinergics, they will block the salivary glands. So, as a result, they cause dry mouth. 
so if it is a person who is uh, you know having difficulty in swallowing or if it is a person who is suffering from uh, something you know uh, maybe parkinson's disease or something in parkinson's disease you know you should you usually have swallowing problems so that is why this kind of people are usually advised to take those kind of food which do not have bones like for example if they are eating non vegetarian food it should not have much of bones because that can cause choking so if this kind of people are taking anticholinergics that can cause more dry mouth and that will make the swallowing much more difficult because saliva is important for lubricating the food that you are chewing so that it can easily go through the git now let's come to the stomach so acetylcholine increases the production of hydrochloric acid you can read the pathophysiology of peptic ulcer disease in that it is written because due to the smell or taste perception acetylcholine triggers saliva production and that causes hydrochloric acid production because food is going down anticholinergics they block hydrochloric acid production and that is why we have pyrenzepine like that some medicines are there propanthaline i'm not sure pyrenzepine some medicines which were actually indicated for peptic ulcer but they are not used nowadays because because we have better varieties who are much more efficacious and the side effects are less so anticholinergics although they have an effect of blocking hcl production but we usually do not use it in practice now let's come to the urinary bladder so urinary bladder you know acetylcholine will aggravate or it will make the urinary bladder much more relax relaxed so what happens is frequent urination can happen but urinary retention is observed with anticholinergics and that is why if anybody is suffering from urinary tract infection for them anticholinergics will not be a very good option why because urine usually consists of bacteria pustules and all these things so if it if the patient patient is already suffering from uti that means bacterial colonization and that time if this urine stays in the bladder which is called retention then it can further damage the urinary tract or it can further worsen the uti acetylcholine increases gastric motility by acting on 5ht4 receptors when i talk about antidepressants i'll talk about it 5ht4 receptors when 5ht4 receptors are activated acetylcholine is released and that increases gastric motility leading to diarrhea anticholinergics do the opposite so anticholinergics what do they do they reduce gastric motility or bowel movement so they lead to constipation now there is very important thing this is something you know you uh, this is very amazing and it's important acetylcholine increases sweat production and that is why your body will always be cool because it's like evaporation condensation theory in condensation what happens when the sweat is produced you feel cool that is actually a body's mechanism to eliminate sweat and to maintain the thermo regulatory status of your body but anticholinergics they block the sweat glands now always remember in the sweat in the sweat there is lot of waste materials now if anticholinergic is blocking the sweat glands sweat will stay inside your body that increases the temperature of your body and that is why people who take anticholinergics frequently report symptoms of fever or pyrexia so that is important cholinergics like acetylcholine they increase the bronchial secretions so when bronchial secretions increase they cause bronchospasm difficulty in breathing you know in organophosphate poisoning pesticide poisoning this happens but anticholinergics they prevent bronchial secretions and that is why anticholinergics we use in asthma copd conditions you know very well ipratropium bromide tiotropium bromide uh, glycopyrrolate and all this kind of things so this is an easy way for to understand the differences between cholinergic and anticholinergic nervous system which i shared with you i hope this information is productive for you if you wish to contact me for further guidance in this description i will share my whatsapp number as well you can contact me anytime happy learning and have a great career ahead